Tays riding shotgun with us, taking your calls and covering the waterfront in this hour. Jeff wants to talk about the economy. Joe wants to talk about game over on the economy. Rich, Joshua, wild man. We'll get to all of you with Gerald Salente. Gerald's been predicting a basically bomb, bond market bust and chain reaction the last few years. And, of course, been focusing on Greece. But we see what I guess you could call direct democracy, something Gerald Salente talks a lot about in uh, Greece happening. My problem is with such a dumbed down public over here, they could have 51% vote to take the middle class's money and redistribute it to Goldman Sachs. But Gerald Salente will say, well, we already have that with the banker bailouts of 2008. And they're clearly gearing up to start doing that in other Western countries. That has now happened in Greece with them only letting them have 22 euros a day out of their accounts. And the Financial Times of London reporting Greek banks prepare plan to raid deposits to avert collapse. Greek banks preparing contingency plans for a possible bail-in of depositors amid fears the country is heading for financial collapse. Well, you should have enough money to let folks have it. Oh, but you don't. Bankers and business people with knowledge the measures said this weekend. The plans which call for a haircut, that's a nice little euphemism, of at least 30% of deposits above 8,000 euros. Sketch out an increasingly likely scenario for at least one bank, the sources say. <laughs> AFP reports sugar, flour, rice, panic Greek stock up on essentials. Greeks are hoarding cash and food this week amid mounting fears the economy could collapse, cracking open their wallets only to stock up on essentials and stripping supermarket shelves in the process. Mothers, elderly men, and university students were spotted pushing heavy overloaded trolleys or coming out of shops weighed down with bags of food with essentials such as sugar, flour, and pasta at the top of the list. Yeah. Drug companies still supplying Greece after no vote. Pharmaceutical companies said Monday they would continue to supply medicines to Greece for now, despite increased financial uncertainty after Greeks rejected the terms of the rescue package. The rescue package. I love how they spin it. Taking money out of your bank accounts, a haircut, putting you under austerity for debts that aren't yours is a rescue package. Latin America celebrates Greek austerity no vote. Buenos Aires, countries across Latin America congratulated Greece on its Sunday referendum in which voters rejected creditors' austerity demands. And that's because just like Africa, you'll have billion-dollar loans, $3 billion loans, $10 billion loans, where over time you pay 10 times or more what the amount was and never get out from under it. And then you find out the IMF and World Bank are just private bank fronts that loaned out digital money backed up by Western credit, taxpayers. And then when the countries finally go belly up, the big banks come in and just take over the infrastructure. They'll finance a coup d'etat if the government doesn't play ball and have them at gunpoint take control. And that's the new word out, and that's on Infowars.com. Kurt Nemo wrote a story about it. U.S. preparing coup to prevent Greece from falling under Russian influence. Well, Gerald Salente is a best-selling author, researcher. Political analyst, frequent guest here, doesn't need really any, uh, doesn't need any introduction. Trendsresearch.com uh, is his website, and he joins us to talk about this situation. Do you think this is finally the big one that Ron Paul and others have been warning of? I mean, we had John just two weeks ago talking about the ratcheting up of hysteria, the elites headed for the exits. Governments and institutions hoarding gold while telling the public don't own it. Gerald Salente, what do you make of the situation uh, on the Greek islands? It's a big one. Even though Greece's GDP is a fraction of the Eurogroup's GDP, it still means a lot because there's a lot of discontent. I just got back from uh, Europe last Wednesday, and uh, there, there's a lot of discontent going around about what their governments are doing to the people. And the so-called austerity measures, which actually come down to robbing you of your pensions, raising taxes, selling off valuable public assets to your buddies at discount rates, 
and increasing the retirement age till after you die. So what this is really bringing about, it's empowering other nations such as Italy and Spain and Portugal that have been put under the yoke of repression, financial repression by the European Monetary Union. So this is really big. And, you know, Alex, I was going back over some information that we wrote in the past. And this is from a Trends Journal. Oh, this was the winter of 2012. So it's actually the, um, the December 2011. And what they were doing back then is the Greek prime minister, Papandreou, had called for, you ready for this? A referendum on the austerity measures. People forgot that. I forgot that. And you know what happened? They got pressure from the European Union to call it off. So they did, because the guy was obviously a coward. So this is very big what happened. And whether or not they voted yes or no really makes no difference. The difference is that the people have taken the future into their own hands, whereby they weren't going to be dictated to be robbed more from the International Mafia Federation, better known as the IMF, and the World Bank and the hedge funds. Who made this baloney up that if banks and hedge funds and private equity groups and what they love to call investors, as adults call gamblers, made bad bets and we the people have to pay them off? They lost their money. This is bankers' money that was lost. Why are they putting the onus on the people to pay them off? I'll tell you why. Because it's called fascism, the merger of state and corporate powers. Nothing has changed, Alex, since the days of Jesus Christ chasing the money changers out of the temple. They just have official names now. They're Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase. They're Bank of, Royal Bank of Scotland. Their, their society general, the money changers have names. And then when you look at the scam going on, who's the guy that runs the uh, European Central Bank? Couldn't be Mario Draghi, former vice chairman of the Goldman Sachs gang of the European division. Who's the guy they put up as a so-called technocrat in Greece that was going to straighten us all out two years ago? Oh, yeah, another guy, a Papademos. Hey, wasn't he with the... Wasn't he with the Goldman Sachs gang, too, and the rest of the group? Of course he was. So this all this is. It's a banking takeover, and they want to paint it in another color to make it seem what it isn't. Well, I can't say it any better, Gerald, than what you just broke down. I would expect now to see the global mafia tear Greece to pieces and blame their economic collapse further into degradation on the Greek people. Uh, I know that uh, areas of Latin America, like Argentina, that were pegged to the dollar and bought into globalism, went from one of the wealthiest countries in the hemisphere to one of the poorest in just a decade. I know you've traveled down there to see it for yourself, uh, but it's a total transformation. These globalists will suck countries dry they will create squalor. They will consolidate control. Uh, and they'll call it free market and scapegoat capitalism while they're at it. So I think it's key that Greece does not pay the taxes and grow their own food as they're starting to do uh, and just totally break with the system. I think that the establishment is going to push so far that whether it's Greece or some other country... They're going to force people to go back to nationalism and back to sovereignty and back to the interest of the people. You summed it up perfectly. And, and that's, I, by the way, I read that article on Infowars about the U.S. preparing uh, for a coup, you know, it, it, to, to really destabilize this area because they made the people, we the people over there, you know, decided what they wanted and that you can't have any of that. So you're exactly right. What this is doing, it's showing the people that they don't need the European Central Bank, Brussels, 
as the mafia controlling them. Their destiny is in their own hands. Look, they have about $350 billion in debt. You saw the GDP of Greece decline some 30% since this whole austerity measure thing began. And as you point out, who do they blame? Let's blame the people because they got social benefits and they're living off the you know, government. They're not talking about the dirty deals that are made. Hey, you know what they haven't cut, Alex? The defense budget. Oh, yeah, that's right. The same thing like that guy, what's his name over there, did over in Wisconsin. That guy with the big mouth and the, and the little mind. What's he's running for president? Walker, that's it. Scott Walker. Yeah, we're going to uh, get rid of all those unions, those public unions, but we're not going to touch the police. Same deal, man. You know, it's one big group, and they want the military in control to put down the people when they get out of line. And that's what they're doing there. Stay there. Gerald Salente is our guest. One thing is clear. There are big problems inside the world government. We're going to break it down and take your phone call straight ahead. We're also going to look at campaign 2016. Chris Christie blames Rand Paul for any terror attacks that come when Rand Paul fought against arming Al-Qaeda. Gerald Salente is our guest. I want to go to Rich and Joe and others that are patiently holding Joe first. But after we take some calls, we're going to get back into other news. Gerald, what else are you looking at on your radar screen of importance? We see the Puerto Rico governor coming out last week and saying they're insolvent. Well, pretty much most counties and cities are insolvent. But we're told by the leader of the free world that raising our debt doesn't raise our debt. We don't know when all this is going to unravel, but it looks like we're getting closer to it. What's going to happen when it unravels? Well, what is going to happen is you're going to start seeing panic in the streets. Take what's going on in Greece. How could any thinking human being that's living in that country have left money in the bank knowing that this was going to happen? So what you mentioned Puerto Rico, they're doing the same thing. How about this? People have lost their jobs. They have a huge unemployment. What, about 40 percent of the people uh, you know, on, on some form of welfare. I got it. Let's raise taxes on the people. That's what they just did. They all do these stupid things. And then you start putting all the pieces together, what's going on around the world. And one of the, th you just asked me what else is on our radar. How about China? That's basically out of the news. The markets there are down some 30% after having gone up, what, about over 100% in 12 months, down 30% since the middle of June. So now, here's what's going on when people say, are the markets rigged? Of course they are, but they love to use that proper language to make it seem as though we're all so stupid because it's white shoe boy talk. This is the headline of today's Financial Times. Here it is. China pumps liquidity into markets in fresh attempt to halt share sell-off. Remember, this is the big story. Pump liquidity? How about rigging the markets? Could anybody say that? Aren't markets supposed to take their natural course? Of course not. Not when you have to keep the Ponzi scheme going. Gerald, I and remember 10 years ago, we, we'd have Ron Paul on talking about the plunge protection team and markets being rigged, and people didn't believe us. Now they admit the currencies are rigged every day, the interest rates are rigged, the stock market's rigged, and I love how they just hide it in plain view like it's a good thing now, and they say we're going to take money out of your private bank account and give it to shadowy groups. That's a haircut. Again, white shoe boy language. Yeah, and and you, you know you mentioned you know what Ron Paul said, and it's it, it, it this isn't conspiracy theory. These guys get convicted, convicted, not charged, convicted of felonies for rigging the LIBOR rate, the interest rates, and the forex market, the currency markets. They're convicted, and not one person goes to jail. 
So that's what it is. They're rigging the markets. It's in front of everybody's eyes. The Chinese are proudly announcing it. If you go to Global Times, one of their their biggest uh, news uh, outlets, they're saying that how they're going to, you know, create stability in the markets. You're rigging the markets. And by the way, the Chinese market is very important because a lot of this money are the so-called retail investors. These are people that are gambling that don't know what they're doing. And they have a huge amount of margin calls. Now you add up what's going on. The, I mentioned to you how much the market has gone up in, in China over the last year, over 100 percent. That was also equivalent to about 1.3 percent of add on to their GDP. So they're actually in looking at declines way beyond what they're reporting. So when you put all this together, what's going on in Europe, what's going on in China, what's going on in Brazil is in a recession. You're looking at destabilization in places like now that's not making the news in America. The globe is on fire and the collapse clearly has been ongoing and is speeding up right now. If China's stock market starts tanking, which headlines say it's begun, you can guarantee that's going to hit our markets. I want to get your take on what you think's next. Gerald Salente, the trends forecaster, and your phone calls. I promise when we come back, we're going right to Joe and uh, Rich and Wildman and Jeff and Joshua and everybody straight ahead. I'm Alex Jones. Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com are the websites. And we'll put Gerald's on screen as well when we come back. Stay with us. Key information straight ahead. TrendsResearch.com's his website. Charles Lund is our guest. We're going to take your phone calls here in just a moment. When I get up on air and start apologizing for being in a bad mood, it's because I'm in such a bad mood, I feel like you can feel it. And in truth, I talk to the crew and others, they go, everything's fine. You don't need to stop apologizing. But I just am physically panicking almost because I know history and I know where this is going. And I've also seen things in my own personal life that I really don't want to see repeated. And then I realize we don't just have bad management, we have really evil management that could cause a nuclear war or anything else for that matter. And yes, the world's waking up to a certain extent, but at the same time, a lot of people are so dumbed down they can't even tell you what the Declaration of Independence is or what July 4th stands for. And that fundamentally gets me down. I believe the people are the answer. But also, the population tuning into mainstream media is not the answer. But we know with austerity, people tend to start really waking up. Humanity is amazing. We have unlimited potential. But if we continue to follow the modern systems of globalism, we have no future. I'm going to ask Gerald Salente what he thinks the next shooter drop is. Then we're going right to your phone calls. Uh, briefly, this broadcast is listener-supported. When you buy the high-quality water filters or you buy shortwave radios or pro-gun T-shirts or any of the, th it's over 500 items now, at InfoWarsStore.com, you are making this transmission possible. And, you know, speaking of management, I personally need to spend more time on trying to figure out how to fund this news operation so that I can expand and do a lot of the big things that I want to be able to do. We have free shipping throughout the month of July. We have 25% off on the Made in America Molon Labe Come and Take It belt buckles. We have a bunch of specials on the nutraceuticals. For anybody that really is in business of manufacturing and producing especially high-quality uh, nutraceuticals, high-quality supplements, you'll know that sourcing the ingredients and getting it manufactured at one of the top three labs, we use three of them, in the United States is a problem because it can take up to four months sometimes to get your product manufactured. And then I've done things like stockpile it and then suddenly nobody wants to buy it and then we don't have money to operate. So I've never gotten to that point in the black where we're comfortable to stockpile everything. I'm tempted to do some type of mega sale or a money bomb or something to get positioned to stockpile all the products 
so that we can then meet demand, which nobody can guess or judge, so that we can go to the next level. That's why I say it's critical that folks support Infowars.com right now because we're in a catch-22. I only ordered a, a test amount of brain force, liver shield, Prostagard, Child Ease, and, and Occupower. They're all sold out. The best news we have is one of them's in in a month. Some of them won't be in for two months. Well, there's our best sellers right there. Brain Force, Liver Shield, Prostagard, Child Ease, Occupower. So that's not a sales tactic. That get it while you can, folks, because we're selling out. Step right up. It's the truth that we're sold out of it. We have the DNA Force. We have the Oxy Powder. We have the colloidal silver, high quality at a low price. We have the Secret 12 Methylcobalamin. Uh, the Oil of Oregano is back in. We have the lung cleanse. We're selling out of both super male and super female vitality in the next two weeks. And we are selling out of Survival Shield X2, and that is our best seller. That's the bad news that we had a limited amount that they had. They manufactured more. Now they're trying to get more of the crystals. And uh, we'll still at least have Survival Shield original if we're not able to continue to manufacture that. Um. So that's just how this works. This is not a bunch of filler and then a bunch of advertising attached to it. These are super high quality products. I mean, quite frankly, we changed the formulation of super male because one of the ingredients was so rare that we were ex extincting in production, you know, uh, where you could get organic shilogy. So we just went ahead and went with two other ingredients and souped it up. I mean, it's it's it, it's a real juggling act. And one of my frustrations is I've got to spend a lot of my time trying to fund this operation. But, hey, that's what proves the American way. We're self-funded. I'm not controlled by sponsors or by some outside network. I can say what I want and do what I want because you have believed in us and supported us and put up with me, quite frankly, and bought the books, the videos, the T-shirts, the supplements, the water filtration systems, all of it. So I want to thank you for your support. Uh, if you want to get Survival Shield X2, now is the time to secure it. Infowarslife.com. If you want to get any of the other products that are still available, like Super Male or Female. Uh, again, we have three manufacturers for something like 14 products. And you get in the queue of these people. And the problem is... They say, well, which product do you want us to do within four weeks? We can only do one. Then we got to do the next one. So that's eight weeks. And so, again, you have a bunch of products sold out, only three manufacturers. That's how you run into it. So I'm just explaining why we're in this situation. We'd be in a great situation if I had a crystal ball and had bought more of, say, Brain Force or Liver Shield. But this stuff knocks your socks off. It really works great. But then I can't judge the listeners what they're into. I mean, I'm into all of this, but people will pick this to be a hot item when I think this is really hot. And that's just the way it works. So as you notice, uh, the fact that things are selling out is not hype. Infowarslife.com or 888-253-3139. But I know that God will always provide. And again, Infowars is doing good overall. We have the subscriptions for the nightly news and we have some sponsors. Uh, I just refuse most sponsors because I have to test it and check it, and I have to get great reviews from listeners because I just can't have booze. One time Willie Nelson told me that. We're sitting around at his house. He goes, there's you know, a few things in life I don't really like, Alex, and one of, them's, one of them's booze. You know that song? By who is it? Is it Hank Williams, Jr.? I like happy and I'm not into sad. And the song goes on. And I like to have women I've never had. <laughs> That's a racy song. That Hank Williams Jr. I'm glad they've taken him off the Super Bowl and Monday Night Football. I'm being sarcastic. Willie Nelson did say that to me. He, he didn't say the part about and I like to have women I've never had. And I'm not name dropping. M my whole life is an absolute Twilight Zone event. And, and you know what? Reality is a Twilight Zone event. Okay, I apologize to Gerald Salente for ranting. But we're doing some mid-air refueling to fund the operation. And speaking of that, you should go and subscribe to his quarterly, trendsresearch.com. 
Gerald Salente is our guest, and Gerald wrote me a very nice letter. I need to talk to him soon. He's got a big event coming up uh, in New York. Uh, so I want to tell folks about that conference and, of course, have you on when that conference comes up, Gerald. I'm not sure if I can attend yet, but uh, we're going to work on that. Uh, but Gerald Salente uh, joins us from Kingston, Colonial Kingston. Gerald, I've been ranting there. Um, what do you think the next big shoe to drop is? Well, well first of all, you, you aren't ranting at all. Uh, you're, you're selling natural healing products. And whole health healing is one of the biggest trends that we see. And you have an audience of people that are enlightened, looking for new directions, and are not prescription drug addicted and want to find other ways of staying healthy physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So the list of products that you read and what you're offering and how people can keep this truth and freedom going is really another service that you're providing. And as you said, it's not a sales pitch. Because when you go down the line of products, who doesn't want the best water filter? Unless, of course, you like drinking, you know, fluoride, chemically induced and toxic water or all those other products. And if the people don't support us, you know, keep supporting the people that are robbing us of our rights and robbing us not of the, only of our rights, but of our livelihood as well. So, no, you aren't ranting. And you said you were depressed because of the masses that are so out of touch. So I have this little quote here that really says it all. It's by Samuel Adams. And he said, it doesn't take a majority, but rather an irate, tireless minority, keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men. It does not take a majority to prevail but rather an irate, tireless minority keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men. And that's what you're doing. That's what I'm doing. That's what Dr. Paul Craig Roberts does. That's what Ron Paul does. There are a number of us that are doing it. It's bringing it all together to make it happen. Because when you look at the clowns that are telling, telling us what to do, how to think, hey, what a wonderful 4th of July, huh, Alex? Did you hunt down any terrorists? Did you keep an eye out open there? You know, if, if you see something, say something. How many times have they done this since 9-11? What is this, about the 30th time of an alert? And they roll out little clowns like that guy King. King, how about Dwarf? Because that's who he is, that representative over here in New York. Fear and hysteria, that's all they know how to sell. Matter of fact, I spent the whole weekend up here in the Catskill Mountains going through brush, looking for terrorists. When were they going to pop out of the woods? <laughs> and they keep doing it. I want to go to some phone calls, but what do you make of the governor of New Jersey saying if there's a terror attack, Rand Paul is to blame when he tried to stop our government funding the radical Islamists that have now turned into ISIS? What would, I, what would I make of Laurel or Hardy? What would I make with a stupid clown of a man shooting off his fat mouth about nothing? There's a, you know, I can't stand these guys that talk tough and can't fight their way out of a paper bag. And they've made bags a lot thinner now. This guy is such a brave guy with all his flunkies around him putting down nothing. He's a total loser. Why would anybody look at the whole clown show, as we call it, the presidential reality show? That's all it is. He has a chance of winning from nothing. And you know what they're doing. They want either maybe a game show for Christie. He'd be great. Oh, yeah, I could see him dressed up as Bozo. He could work at SeaWorld. Beautiful. He could work at SeaWorld as a trained SEAL. So that's all it is. Of course, what they're trying to do is rob us of our rights. Why would anybody listen to any of them? So, again, what a loser this clown is. And he's doing it for his own ego. As I said, maybe a book deal, maybe a TV show. But I, I think SeaWorld would be great because he could also, you know, they could feed the whale or feed him. It's going to look the same. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, man. Yeah. When I say I get depressed, actually, a lot of good things are happening. It's just crazy how they turn around that Greece deserves all this, and the media acts like it's no big deal as they prepare to grab private money out of bank accounts that's after taxes to give it to foreign banks. I mean, this is global government under the banksters, and you know it's all coming here in their war on cash, Gerald. They're getting it all ready, and I think that's it, that I want to expose them faster because you can clearly see they're about to drop the hammer. I mean, they're getting ready for something big, Gerald. You know, people ask me, you know, what about gold and silver? And as I always make it very clear, I do not give financial advice. Why would you not want to have gold and silver now? Suppose you lived in Greece. And by the way, from the reports I'm reading, gold sales are going up very strongly over there. So when they go to this, as you mentioned, a, a paperless currency of, you know, just digital money backed by nothing and printed, you know, in thin air, I believe that the next spike in gold prices and silver prices are going to be exactly that. You're going to start seeing them run up when the next cri the crisis has happened. The panic is on. Again, how could anybody in their right mind living in Greece have money in the bank? And you've heard me say many times the stories that have happened to me. And of course, you well know the MF global story. And MF is the perfect initials of the guy Corzine who stole my money out of my uh, segregated account when I used to buy gold through MF Global. So what I'm saying is, why wouldn't people prepare for the worst? Because if you prepare for the worst and the worst doesn't happen, you've lost nothing. But if you don't prepare you lose and everything. the worst occurs... You lose everything. All right, we're going to go to Joe, and then we're going to go to Jeff. And everybody, they're such troopers uh, for holding. I'm going to get their address and send them a free T-shirt of their uh, size. We got 10% off this month, by the way, on all the T-shirts, including all the Made in America ones. I didn't mean to turn that into a plug, but I just did. So we're going to give Joe, Jeff, Wildman, Joshua, and Rich all free T-shirts for holding so long. But before I do that, we're going to play a video to give Chris Christie some free time it turns out I was wrong, and I apologize. He already works at SeaWorld. Here's exclusive video of uh, his first day at SeaWorld. Here it is. Go. <laughs> and, hey, he's a big hit. Let's uh, go ahead and go to Joe in Pennsylvania. You're on the air. Thanks. Hey, Alex. How you doing, guys? All right, brother. Um, Thanks for holding. Go ahead. No worries. Uh, you ain't got to send me nothing for free. You guys. I want to do it. I'm sending everybody that's been holding for an hour a, a free T-shirt. Go ahead. Well, I'm glad I waited because there were so many things that you guys were talking about that just are they come together with what I'm saying there and and this whole thing with Greece when that when they defaulted last week and of course it was right after the markets closed and then next thing Puerto Rico went. I'm physically sick. You got every right to be depressed, but we are all, you know, whether it's a big guy or a little guy, we're all trying to wake people up. We're depressed, but we're trying to wake people up. Um, but this is, we're all that crazy. Um, there was a, I don't know if you guys ever heard of uh, Lawrence uh, Dunnigan or uh, Dr. Day. Um, it was an interview done back in 1969, and it was uh, recently put out in three parts audio. And it was two parts were in 1988, one was in 1999, and they laid out everything that was going to happen from 1969. Uh, the audio came out in 1991, and you said something that sent chills down my spine because you said something big is going to happen. You just recently said that uh, just now, and a while back you said you think it's going to happen in the winter. And they said everything, 98% of what they said was going to happen or that's going on today they said, you know, it's, it's already happening. But anyway, um, they the thing that really freaked me out was when you said you're expecting something to happen in winter. And the, the, what the guy said was probably what's going to happen is the big dissenters, they're going to do something during the winter, probably on a Friday, get everybody out, take them out, and uh, come Monday, everybody would be accustomed to the new world order, and they'd get them all accustomed to it over the weekend. And basically... A big puzzle has been thrown out uh, over the past, you know, 
60, 100 years. The pieces have been put together. We're getting a picture. We see the picture. And unfortunately, I hope it doesn't get down to the last piece being put together and finally people go, there it is. But in my opinion, Greece is just a little tiny thing, like Mr. Solani said. It's not, you know, it's not, the GDP is not that big, but it's, it's small. It's going to start small. It's going to escalate. It's a domino. And the domino effect is just, sure. it's, it's going to tumble. Well, thank you, Joe. Uh, and go on hold. We're going to get your address, and I'll and I'll send you and your size, and we'll send you a free uh, Second Amendment T-shirt from Infowars.com or a 1776 shirt or something. Um, what you're getting at is everybody feels it. You can intellectually, politically see it, and it's just a feeling of not wanting to see these countries collapse. The reason Greece is so important is that. Other countries in the euro are even in worse shape, and how far will this go? So that's why Greece is a big deal. The whole house of cards is untenable. Uh, do you want to respond to anything Joe said, uh, Gerald Salente? No, he really summed it up. It's a domino effect, and it starts small, and again, it, it's, it's what Samuel Adams said. You know, it, it takes a, uh, doesn't take a, a majority to prevail, a small set of, of instances of the ones that make it all happen. And again, what they did with direct democracy by letting the people vote, you know, that's the way I believe it should be. You pointed out, you know, we have a lot of people that would vote the other way. But again, putting it all into context, as we have it now, you know, we don't have a representative form of government. We have a gang of 535 senators and congressmen that are bought off by the multinationals. That's who they represent. So put democracy in the hands of the people. And this coming from Greece, I mean, the cradle of democracy, to me, says a lot. Because the people spoke. Rather than having a bunch of sellouts, liars, crooks, and thieves speaking for us, better known as congressmen and senators, I think direct democracy is the way to go on big issues. Well, uh, one thing's for sure. Right now, we have the globalists running however they want. And as you said, if you look at Iceland and other countries, they've signed these nations on to the derivatives debt. Almost all the debt is not the nation states. And, and they knew years ago when they passed austerity and raised all these taxes, it would reduce GDP. And that was the point, Dr. Roberts, you, Ron Paul, countless others made here on the air was that it was meant to depress it so they couldn't pay it back. And the last straw was when they called for a huge new increase in value-added tax on all tourism. Well, that's all that country's got now. They're not stupid. They've seen their GDP shrink, and they understand what's going on. They understand they're being imploded and being maneuvered towards total bankruptcy. So why pay something back that isn't your debt and it's impossible to pay back. I think Greece has had a moment of its, uh, of sanity. Uh, Jeff in California, thanks for holding. You're on the air with Gerald Salente from TrendsResearch.com. Hey guys, uh, you know Salente Jones, 2016. That, that would be great. Um, you know the White Shoe Boys, uh, as Gerald calls them, uh, running the wrecking ball, and you know they they wrecking everything. You know I talked to, to this about people that uh, you know, I live in Southern California. I'm surrounded by people that, like you say, Alex can't wipe their own hind ends. <clears throat> Um, people say, well, you know, it's not that bad and everything. Um, it is bad. I, they're, they're wrecking and destroying everything. And by the way, uh, we're not joking. Thing. The average trendy, my dog is smarter than them. I mean, and, and Gerald's right. It takes a minority, either evil or good, to fix things or to take over, vice versa. But how do you deal with a mass of people juxtaposed by super hardworking, great men and women of every race, color, and creed, and I hate to give into this cliche that immigrants want to work harder and are better. The, the smart ones do know about the Federal Reserve and the New World Order and do want to work. The problem is our government advertises for lazy immigrants to come in and go on welfare. I'm sorry, I'm ranting. It's just, Gerald, what do we do? And then I want the caller to finish about the mass of just, have you seen the Mark Dice videos in ours where eight out of ten people don't know what the 4th of July is? Yeah. I mean, who Again. are these people? Again, it, they, they will go anywhere. They'll follow whatever the trend is of the time. So what it takes is for more of us 
to be out in the forefront, they'll gladly join in. They because they're only getting one message. Because the the change, though, again, it's underway. And as the first caller said, you know, the dominoes are falling. They don't count in a lot of ways in the sense that. They're not going to be activists in any way. They'll go wherever the flow goes. You're right. You're they'll right. In fact, that's what I was told by a big Hollywood flow. producer. He goes, Alex, quit getting sad that people are so dumb on average. He goes, that just means good people can lead them even easier. You just have to get out there and lead them and be a leader and stop worrying about how dumb they are. You know, that's just sadly the way they were brought up. And they'll get smarter in the process once they get hurt. Precisely. I'm sorry, Jeff. Go ahead. You know, uh, years ago, I, I was part of an organization. I sent about over 350 letters to the White House and Congress and so on, you know, regarding immigration. And, and then I, I realized that they don't want to fix it. They didn't want to fix it. I mean, this is all by design to, to destroy the old America any way they possibly can. Destroy the family, destroy a culture, you know, every, you know, in every different way. And, um, you know, they, they do have a plan. You, know, you talked about it, Alex. It's, it's global governance. And, and so they need to wreck everything. And it's frustrating because, you know, I'm surrounded by people that, that are being fed from, you know, they're, they're these they're people on television and their favorite, you know, I mean, right now it's uh, women's soccer and, you know, everybody's going, going crazy. Meanwhile, they're, they're completely wrecking the world and wrecking the country. And, uh, Nobody seems to care. I, I mean, a lot of people do, but I, you know, I wear my bumper stickers. I, I refuse to talk. No, no, about I hear you, brother. We're going to do five minutes of overdrive if Gerald can do it. Gerald Salente, trendsresearch.com. I'm Alex Jones. Again, but like Gerald said, that was great advice. We've just got to keep getting the word out because as stuff gets darker, the light's going to stand out. Stay with us. Our frustration is we've been partially conquered by special interest offshore banks. And those of us that are informed, it, it's just so obvious. And we're frustrated with the mass of dumbed down people. But that's probably only 30, 40% of the public that I guess were raised in front of a television set. There's a large segment that's starting to wake up. All the numbers show that. And so I don't want to be too negative today. Just sometimes I get upset and uh, I'm probably not good for the cause overall. And, and I'm not, when I get in that mode, and I'm not trying to cheerlead either. Uh, and be over positive. I think Gerald Salente is absolutely right. Uh, we have never had a better time to wake people up. Gerald, before we go to Rich and a few other callers, uh, can you speak briefly uh, to why you think things are optimistic? Yeah, because the vacuum is so large. I mean, there was a, a study that just came out. It's like 70% of the people don't trust the, ma the major media anymore. You look at the numbers on how people are so disillusioned with the with the uh, presidential reality show. As, and you pointed out you could fill the vacuum with anything. It could be a minority can make it worse or a minority could make it better. You know, I'd like to pick up on what Jeff just said about and what you were talking about with immigration. This is from my book Trends 2000 that I wrote back in 1996. A University of California study showed that roughly one-fifth of the growth in the wage gap between the skilled and unskilled since the mid-1970s was linked to the growing supply of unskilled immigration labor. Immigration was costing the chiefly affected states, New York, Florida, Texas, Illinois, and California, an estimated $8 billion a year in services. So there you go. This whole immigration thing, it began with the National Association of Manufacturers. Try, now we don't have any of that, much of it anymore, bringing in cheap labor. Then it was pushed with these H-1B visas by the Silicon Con men over there that wanted cheap labor coming in. And now you're seeing it across the board. It's doctors. It's everything that you could find. They're bringing in more and more cheap labor. I told you I just came back from Europe. The greatest trend that everybody should be watching, here we call it immigration, there they're calling it migration. You take 100,000 years ago to now, to 1900 rather, it took that time to put 1.6 billion people on the planet. From 1900 to now, we've added essentially 6 billion people. They're flooding into Europe, and no one's talking about the cause. 
Why are they flooding out of Libya? Hey, it couldn't be because of Hillary Clinton, Obama, Samantha Powers, Susan Rice. Well, that's the, in a sick way, we are to blame because we allowed our leaders to literally destabilize all those areas. Exactly. So they're coming in from Afghanistan, Yemen, Iraq. They're coming in from Sudan. They're coming in from Somalia. They're coming in from, hey, how about those French going into Mali, huh? How about destroying that? I'm telling Let me you, stop Alex you for a minute. We got to end the show, and I'm sorry the other callers. Free T-shirt okay. to everybody holding. Gerald Salenti, I want to give you the final comment. But as you're saying all this, and I'm reading the same stuff, I follow it, you travel the world, the people running things couldn't do a worse job. I mean, but then I realized they like it. They love this it, because they always pose as the saviors and grab more power out of each crisis. Where does it end? It ends with we the people. And that's what you were talking about before, uh, about the things that we're trying to do and you're trying to do to make it happen. And, and we could have peace and prosperity. We still have what it takes we just have a bunch of losers running the show. If any of these guys worked in a business like yours, mine, or any major business, they'd be out of business. Are, are you involved? I mean, I know you're really promoting this direct democracy you know, stuff to counter all this. Are you involved? And in, you know what? We need to get you back very soon to talk about some of the events you come up. And I also need to give you a call to talk about that, Gerald. Thank you so much. TrendsResearch.com. And, and thanks for cheering me up. You're awesome. And thanks for all you're doing, Alex, and uh, thanks for having me on. You're awesome. He did cheer me up. I'm in a good mood now, so I hope you did that for everybody else.